All right, a while back uh, when the first steak kit tutorial video went live, uh, it said that I would make another tutorial showing uh, how to incorporate steak kit with a standard uh, character. So uh, that's what this tutorial is going to be, but with a slight catch. So uh, I've been working with Mechanum a lot now that it, uh, it appears to be uh, performant enough for mobile. So steak kit now has uh, a big brother. Stake it has uh, the original uh, state machine has uh, has been updated to have uh, a partner uh, over here, which is the Mechanim state machine. So uh, all of the all of the things that we'll go over for this Mechanim tutorial uh, will actually apply to the standard uh, state machine. So state kit will uh, both of them are, are really analogous. They work the same way. There's, uh, there's basically the only difference is that the Mechanim state machine is really designed to be used with Mechanim. So uh, we're going to jump right into this now. Uh, I invite you to read the comments in these in the code here. There's uh, there's actually very little code. Uh, all of the the Mechanim state machine is uh, what is it, like 106 lines of code here, and uh, the SK Mechanim state class is 52. So I mean there's there's very little code here, but it makes working with Mechanim a joy. All right, so uh, first thing we'll do is we'll uh, we'll have a quick look at the state machine as set up over here in Mechanim. So this is a, a really simple state machine. We uh, this is just to illustrate controlling a character and and just the the fundamentals of how to how to use state kit with Mechanim. So we have three states. We have run, run left, and run right. And I just grabbed these animations out of the Unity uh, tutorial. So. We, uh, we have two parameters, go left, go right, and you can see only from the run state can we run left or right. So uh, there's no transition to connect left to right. So we always have to be running straight. And uh, that's just to, to simplify this particular uh, tutorial. And uh, over here, uh, this isn't gonna be a mechanism tutorial, so we're not gonna go through all the setup on this, by the way. So I uh, just wanna show the basic state machine so we can understand how it all comes together. So uh, you can see our condition here is that go right is true, and then we start running right. And conversely, when go right is false, we go back to running straight. And same thing for running left. So real simple state machine. Obviously, in, a, in an actual game, you'd have uh, a lot more complex a state machine. And uh, one other minor little point here is you'll see that root motion is turned off. And uh, the reason for that is just uh, so that when he's running, he doesn't just end up running off the cliff over here. But uh, one thing that you will notice uh, when we actually uh, get into the code is when he's in the run left or the run right state, uh, these states will actually handle turning root motion on while it's in this state, and then they'll turn it off when it returns back to run. And uh, that's just to, to illustrate how you can actually uh, affect your animator and your character from the different states. So when you're working with state kit and mechanism, you'll generally want to have one class for each of your states. So we're gonna have uh, exactly that here. So uh, if we look at the states, we have uh, run left state, run right state, and run straight state. So that maps directly here. So uh, state kit's gonna essentially um, be analogous to, to what you have in your, your mechanism state machine. And, and there'll be times where you um, don't wanna have that, like maybe you have a sub-state machine of a couple different kinds of runs, and uh, you know, for those you might just want one, uh, one state kit class to run them. But you know, it's up to you. It's totally flexible. So jumping back into the code here, uh, we're not going to look at the mechanism state machine too much. You can read that at your leisure, but uh, we will jump into the actual player controller here. Well, actually, let's let's look at one of the states first. So this is the run left state, and. Uh, you can see that it, uh, it, it just subclasses that SK Mechanum state, and this is your context class. So in this case, it's a Mechanum player controller. So this would be um, whatever script is, is controlling your player. You would just uh, make it a, a subclass of that. This way, each of your states has full access to this script. And uh, you know, in this particular case, it's really simple. So if you had a more complex Mechanum player controller, uh, he, this, this class might actually be responsible for all kinds of other stuff, shooting, picking up items, anything that would, would be relevant to your particular game. So 
the way this, uh, this the mechanism state machine uh, line that works is uh, when you actually when you're creating your states, what you want to do is you want to pass in the mechanism string for your state. So this can be found right in. Uh, so we have our base layer, and it's called base layer, and uh, we want the run write, for instance. So it would be base layer, and make sure you 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 copy this exactly as it is. And there is a space by default. Of course, you can name your layers anything you want, but just using the defaults, it's base layer dot state name. So jumping back over here, you'll see we have base layer dot run left. And uh, what that does is it's going to take the state that this is the actual mechanism state that this uh, that this state kit class is is tied to, and it's going to use the animator string to hash, and it'll store the mechanism state hash. And the reason it does that is so that the mechanism state machine will only call the reason and update methods when we're actually in this state specifically. So when mechanism is completely in sync with this class is the only time it'll be called. And right here we also do another uh, string to hash call. And what you want to do is just cache all of your string to hash lookups. So in this particular case we have the go left parameter. And in the constructor, we'll just cache it and store it in here. This way we don't have strings all over the place and we're always keeping everything as efficient as possible. And it also reduces your uh, chance for error. So if you were to change go left, for example, uh, to a different name over here, you would only have to then change it in one spot. And uh, just like the standard state kit, we have a begin, reason, update, and end. And you uh, you don't have to uh, the only one you actually have to um, have to have in your class is update. But in this demo, uh, when you're working with mechanism, it's going to make a, a lot of sense to use the begin and the end. So you can see here what we do is uh, when we switch to this class, begins called, and or switch to this state. And what we're going to do is this state is going to set the boolean, the go left that we stored up here, and that's going to basically just toggle this on so that we switch from running straight to running left and when we end it's gonna reset that bool to false and you'll see also that uh, apply root motion is is uh, toggled true while we're in this state and false while we're not so let's just have a quick look at the demo here so by default you can see we're in the run straight state so this is why root motion was was turned off for this particular state and I'm just gonna select the character so you can see up here so when we uh, press the right arrow, you can see root motion is now toggled on and we've switched to the run right state. So if we let go, we then switch back to the run straight state and apply root motion is off. And the same goes for left. So you can see we, uh, we can run left and right here and it's swapping states. And you'll notice over here that the console is, uh, is dumping some stuff. And what that is, is uh, it's just the state changed event. And whenever state is changed, it just fires an event so that you can you'll always know which state you're in. All right, so that's uh, that's the basics right there. So uh, I'm actually uh, using this same class for a much more complicated setup, and it scales really well and works great for uh, for using Mechanim. And uh, you know, Mechanim doesn't have a few things that it needs right now, such as an event system and well, various other things. Uh, API access is, is still fairly limited, but uh, it is uh, it is pretty nice when you, when you end up wiring it up with, uh, with an SK Mechanism state machine here. All right, that's it. As always, you can find the code on GitHub under the username Prime31.